How's it going everybody? Resale Rabbit here. So this video is going to be very different from all my other videos. I'm going to show you how to rewire a lamp. Look at this cool little fire hazard. This is a really cool looking lamp. Oh, look at that. Do you really want to be plugging that in? I want no part of this. And then of course the wires sticking out and we're going to take this apart. It's actually very simple and it won't take very long. But first, we're going to take a trip to the hardware store. Boy, did I have a heck of a time finding this. So it's in the lighting section. If you're at Menards, look for like these extra globes and shades and whatnot. But here's what we're looking at. This is your whole kit to make a lamp. You can make it out of a jar or an old fire extinguisher or whatever you want. It's $7.99. Uh, this is not what we need though, because I don't need a harp. So we would be looking for something more like this. Also $7.99, we're gonna have the wire, which is uh, only eight feet though. So this is more for a table lamp. So there might not be a kit that would work for me. So in which case, now I'm gonna look for something like this, just the wire. See, it's got a plug on one end. That's only eight foot though. So these ones here, it looks like it's just the wire. I don't see the other end of it, but I also don't see a plug. There it is. So these are just the wire. They are 25 feet long. This is a 15 footer and it's got the plug. I think I might go with this. The gold should look nice with the, with what I've got. Alternatively, I'd like to go clear, but eight feet just isn't gonna be enough. So I'm going with this 15 foot. One thing to consider is you probably have more color options online. Now this, 550. If you're trying to go with a retro look, there are also braided ones here. It'd be kind of cool, but there are only eight footers. So you can see there are a lot of options with sockets. We've got this one where it's a twist, but it's on the back. We've got these where you're pushing the switch through. We've got these ones where you turn the switch. You can kind of choose, you got pull chain. You can kind of choose what you want here. We've got also three-way if you want to put a dimmer on it. Uh, what else? Two circuit, whatever that means. Uh, we've got, wow, Bakelite socket. There, now we're focused on there. Uh, we've got porcelain sockets over here. So you've got a lot of options, but what you're probably gonna want is just one of these. I think I'm gonna go with this. Gold will kind of match it. The alternative is black. And since we're just gonna do an exposed bulb, we're gonna probably wanna go with gold here. And this was, I don't remember which one I grabbed, the pull chain, $3.28. So combined, I think this was $5.50, $3.28. So about nine bucks here. So it's not coming up very well in video, but that's the one that I wanna go with. And that is going to be, where did I just see it? right here uses six and a half watt so that is what we're gonna go with kind of a neat look there's another swivel one up here but i kind of like the look of the long bulb here and it's about 10 bucks the total was exactly when the lamp was made 1958 i don't know that's when it was made i thought it would be funny it wasn't so now let's go put this crap on the lamp now the first thing we want to do is up here We'll pull, oh, lost something. We're pulling this off. Now, normally the wires are actually gonna be wired in. So you don't need to just rip it off. You'll have to actually, you know, take some screws out. Should be pretty easy to figure out just looking at it. So we're fishing it through here. This might actually unscrew, grab some pliers. So a lot of this is just kind of looking at how this is put together. So this unscrews. And then you pull that off. And then the wire, we're just going to fish through here and from there we can pull it right out so now now we're going to want to discard this little fire hazard one thing that i like to do just cut the end off and the reason is i'm recycling this i don't want someone to try and use this i doubt someone will 
but now that can get recycled. Now, we'll go into our goodie bag, and we've got this. So it's fairly easy. You've actually got a plug on one end, so it doesn't really matter. You know, there's no special way to do it. We're just going to fish it right in through here. So I got caught. I couldn't push it up any further, so I just started rotating this. Most lamps, you just rotate them. And it took a little force at first because this probably hasn't been taken apart in 100 years. So I'm noticing now, no matter how much I fidget, I can't get any more in. So I'm gonna pull it out. And notice I kept my finger on it, run it in line here. Right here is where it's getting stuck. So right before this little rust mark. So I got myself a wire hanger. I'm gonna stick that in and see if that goes through. It's a little bit more rigid. I might need to straighten that out a little more. It's a little more rigid. So we'll have a little bit more, maybe there's something caught in it we can push it through. I don't know, we'll find out. So I got it through and I realized, or almost through, and I realized I made a mistake. <clears throat> These gold pieces that go over the pipe, I didn't have them attached. And because the cord's here, the only way to attach them is before the cord, so I had to pull it all the way out. I did get it past the stuck spot, but I had to pull it all the way out and do it again. And with a little persuasion, I got it out. So now, I'm just gonna pull it through, give myself plenty of slack, and we are going to do the, this little weave that it did before. Now obviously this is, because this is a more decorative end where the cord is exposed, we need to do this, but if you your cord is already like inside of it. You don't need to do anything fancy like this. Now it looks, the gold actually doesn't look too bad. You barely even notice it. So now it's time to wire it in. So we're gonna grab this lamp socket. With this lamp socket, it's got this little threading inside and you see there's no place for it to thread. So I was gonna grab this, but this, it'll thread on there, but that's actually what's supposed to thread on here. So that's a problem. Then I took a look at the old one. I actually do need part of this. So I'm back at Menards. All I really need is something, I have this in a bag because it's covered in WD-40, but with this threading on both sides, in hindsight, I probably could have harvested this off of another lamp, but this is what I need, but shorter, and I'd rather not cut it. Let's see if they have the right part. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to take it off of another lamp. So they've got these multiple different sizes of buck 99 for the whole thing i'm thinking this is what i'll go with it so what we're going to want to do is run the cord through it i've got way too much cord here and screw it in And actually looking at this, I might want to grab the shorter one. This might be too long um, because this is going to sit like this and you'll actually end up seeing some of that. So let me take this off. I wish there was something a little in between, but this will suffice. Now, at this point, we're going to attach this. What you would normally do if you're putting a harp on it, you're going to want to put the harp on before this part. But since we're not putting a harp on here, we're good to go. This screw right on. And then we've got this little set screw here. We'll just tighten that. And that's going to hold it in place. Now, I'm going to pull this out. And it is time. Oh, that's being stubborn. There we go. It's time to wire it on. Now, we're going to have a brief electrical lesson in polarity. This is how electrical circuits work in the U.S. You see how there's two wires here? I'm going to give you the simplified version. One of these wires is hot and the other one is not. Or 
neutral. So how do you tell which of these wires is hot and which one is not? Well, it's simple. The hot wire is going to have a little ribbed edge. I don't know how well this is going to show up on video. Yeah, I can't get that to focus. But if you feel the outside of this one is smooth and the outside of that one is rough, it's got like a line going down it. Now, if you look at the packaging, the ribbed wire is the neutral wire. You want to look at your packaging. This is the rule of thumb, but in other countries, it might be a little bit different. You also want to check your packaging in case you've got some weird thing that's the other way around or something. But in this case, the neutral is the ribbed wire. Now, when we look at this, you're going to see two screws. You're going to see there is a brass right there, a brass screw and a silver screw. The silver screw is going to be your neutral. Your brass is going to be your hot. So the next thing we need to do, we need to tie an underwriter's knot. There's a little diagram on here. It should be on the back. This is the socket. It should be on the back of all of them. You want to tie it just like that. If you don't see it, you can easily Google it or just look at this picture. So I'll explain the knot in a minute. But you're just going to pull it nice and tight. And then pull that up and pull out the extra slack. Next, we're going to screw these on. So you want to feel the rib side. Now, one thing that's important is where they connected, there's going to be a rib just because of the glue that held them together. So one is going to now have one rib. The other one's going to have two because of that pulling that apart. Now, the reason this is important is because if you do it the opposite direction, you can actually, it'll still work, but it can actually ground out mean you can electrocute yourself. Remember, the goal of this is to not electrocute ourselves and burn our house down. So we're going to find the ribbed one. That is going to be this one right here. And what you're going to want to do is create a little loop and go to the neutral screw. Unscrew it a little bit and loop it around so it goes underneath. Now you want it to run about three quarters of the way around. Now you also want to loop it around counterclockwise here. That way when you tighten the screw, it's not pulling out. So then you tighten the screw up. Now you're going to do the same thing with the other side. We're going to create a little loop here. And you're just going to stick it in. And this is basically when you're wiring anything. It could be an outlet, a light switch, a lamp. You want to run the cord around counterclockwise. That way, since you're tightening it, or I'm sorry, run it around clockwise. Ignore what I just said. Run it around clockwise. Since you're tightening it clockwise, you want to be able to not pull it out. Now, we're going to want to... Put this little cardboard piece on and then push it in, tuck everything inside. I think my wires are a little bit too long, but we're tucked inside. And then this piece, you push it on. There we go. There we go. You push it until you hear the click. You do want to keep that cardboard piece on. That's important. It's an insulator. Now, at this point, we're wired in place. That's how we're going to turn it on and off. Now, it's time to reattach the base. So, now the base, hopefully, you wired it through all of these pieces. We've got some extra slack that we're going to pull out. A whole bunch of extra slack here. And then this will slide on there. And this will slide on here. Now, one thing that isn't a bad idea, and this would have been an earlier step, but if you have space inside the lamp base above this, tie another knot. See, the reason for the knot is when we're pulling on this, it's not going to pull on the actual screwed on connections there. It's going to pull on the knot. Because obviously, if you pull on this, and it could be now when I'm putting it together, or it could be 10 years from now, maybe I trip over it at home when it's plugged in, or 
I grab the lamp and rip it out of the wall, it could disconnect that. I mean, you could have bare wires touching this metal thing. That's not a good idea. So back over here, we're gonna pull this the rest of the way through. And then we're just standing this up and screwing it on. Now it's actually threaded down here. That's why there isn't a nut on the bottom. If we come up here, you can see I'm spinning it into place. So we'll just do this the rest of the way. So it's all held together. And we are all tightened and ready to go now. It's worth note, some lamps, that's just gonna sit on there. And there will actually be a nut on the bottom that you'll tighten. In this particular case, the whole stem is threaded. So we're spinning the whole thing. We got the bulb in, we're all plugged in. Worth note, there's a lot of cord here. What I could have done was cut some of the cord off before we wired it in here. But there we go. You can't really see the detail on the bulb. There, now you can kind of see it. It doesn't pick up that great on the camera, but it's nice and bright. It looks cool. We are good to go. It's completely rewired. So now we've got a probably 1950s lamp that 21 $21.68 later is completely modernized and safe. And half that was the $10 light bulb. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.